The case of the Ordinary's salicylic acid, a product that basically disappeared into thin air after allegedly, potentially, committing some crimes to some people's faces. <coughs> Chemical burns. And then an imposter that tries to come and take its place, but people aren't having it. And then the resolution where the original pops up, a slightly improved version of themselves, not apologizing or taking responsibility for what happened, but slightly tweaking their formulas to bring it back on the market. What what is going on with the new salicylic acid anhydrous solution from The Ordinary that, by the way, will not stay on shelves, versus The Ordinary's salicylic acid 2% solution. This was a product that was probably the fourth or fifth Ordinary purchase that I ever made. The salicylic acid from The Ordinary was one of my favorites as someone who is very oily and acne prone. But let me tell you, this product is not for the faint of heart. And shortly after I started using it, The Ordinary ripped it from shelves for literally over over a year. Essentially, this is a salicylic acid serum, and it's very unusual, especially when we compare it to the new launch that they just did and a bunch of the other products that are on the market. And in this video, I'm going to break down what the differences are, who this is for, and really what the f happened here. So as mentioned, this launched initially as a salicylic acid solution. Salicylic acid is this BHA, this relatively large molecule that is oil soluble. It's medically proven to help with acne, and in America, based on the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, FDA that kind of regulates certain claims on products, the highest percentage you can have is 2%, which is what's in here. Now this is an unusual salicylic acid serum. Most salicylic acid serums are good, clear, um, you know, well-absorbing. This serum is actually clear inside of the bottle, but when you actually dispense it and apply it onto the skin, it becomes this milky color. It almost, um, I don't want to say it's frothy or foamy, but it almost turns a little bit white and pasty on the skin, as you can see. And even the old version and the new remastered version still seem to do this. Now, this product is also not for the faint of heart. While this is not the Ordinary's AHA BHA chemical peel, this stuff will dry out your face. I have actually found myself liking to spot treat with this because of how well it works and kind of putting on my T-zone as someone who is very oily. But for those who are dry, you can't use this. And unfortunately, salicylic acid is one of the best ingredients for acne. And here come all of these people with acne prone skin who happen to be acne prone and dry, and they're just left out of the conversation. Now this one never really burned my skin. Most people who use this not only had great results with it, but they loved it. And although it's approved for use on the face, some people put it on their chest and on their backs and it worked so well. And then mysteriously, one day, it disappears. Did some people have problems? Oh, some people had problems. The Ordinary has never taken responsibility for this. And of course, with any consumer facing product, if you are using the product improperly, or if you don't patch test the product, things can of course go wrong. And just because it goes wrong for one person doesn't mean it's gonna go wrong for everyone. But um, this is a potent product and some people had chemical burns. Yes, there were some articles online from arguably not the most trusted sources. You know, you can't really find three independent sources backing all of these things up. But some people basically said, I used this product, I left it on overnight, and it burned my skin. For some people, maybe they also had some other form of bacterial infection on the skin. And when using a product like this to treat that, thinking it was acne, it didn't work well. But at the end of the day, it was not looking good. And this is a very potent product. So I could see that maybe just because it's salicylic acid at 2%, there's something about the way it was formulated that was causing it to penetrate deeper into the skin and causing problems. But again, the Ordinary, parent company Decium, and even some of their parent companies like Estee Lauder have never confirmed nor denied this. And they were just like, she should bring problems. We're like, oh, it's temporarily discontinued. And me, as a huge fan of this, as well as many other people, were so upset. We were like, where is our salicylic acid? What have you done with it? And as the pandemic went on, it kind of made sense with supply chain issues and manufacturing issues that maybe it wasn't there. But instead of just relaunching this, they launched this. This is the 2% salicylic acid anhydrous solution from The Ordinary. And this, oh, this made some people mad and it made some other people very, very happy. Anhydrous by definition means anhydrous, an or without hydrous, hydration or water. And this is a no water product. The ingredients contain squalene as a main ingredient, that wonderful oil that is related to squalene that our skin naturally produces. Do you remember our shark analogy? How the squalene walks down the lane to get hydrogenated and becomes squalene? Well, you, my dear, are a skin intellectual. So if you haven't, the link is there for you. But this contains the 
antioxidant, more stable version, this squalane that is plant derived. And fun fact, I actually found out the exact place that it comes from because it is plant derived, AKA sugarcane derived, fun fact. And yes, it also has caprylic triglycerides, some other oils and fatty acids and salicylic acid. And this is basically an oil salicylic acid. Now that is fantastic and it's wonderful for skin, but a lot of people who loved this bought this thinking it would be the replacement, thinking that this is the new salicylic acid solution and it will fill the empty place of the disappearance of this lovely, beautiful bottle left in our hearts. But no, this is very different. Remember, this is salicylic acid plus witch hazel. This dries out the skin, goes on clear, kind of foams up, almost like a little bit of like sea chunkiness. Someone come up with an analogy for me because I'm, I'm lost on this one. But this on the other hand, this is oily. Yes, it absorbs into the skin, but if you've ever put squalane oil on your skin, it is like a dry oil. This is a completely different texture. And does it help with acne? Yeah. Does it help with blemishes? Yes. Does it penetrate deeply into skin? Yes, but it doesn't dry you out. And if you have oily skin, this might actually be a little bit much for you, even though it is efficacious. Now, a lot of people got pissed off. They said, what is going on with this? This is nothing like the salicylic acid I was hoping for. And we thought that, you know, this product had come in, murdered the other one and tried to play imposter syndrome and just take its place and think that we wouldn't notice, even though they look dramatically different as well. But then this one popped up out of nowhere and was like, jokes on you. I just had like a study abroad session and I'm back and better than ever. I learned a few things, tweaked a couple of things as well, but I'm here to not burn off your face and not cause problems. It's like she went to Barcelona and she's like, I'm back and better than ever, bitches. Yeah. Now these two are very different, but we have a world where they are coexisting together again. So who are these for? What is in them? How do you use them? And should you buy both? Should you buy neither? Is one gonna burn off your skin and the other gonna save it? Well, let's talk about it. As mentioned, we have to look at the fundamentals of salicylic acid. It's going to help with acne, it can help with bacteria, it exfoliates the skin, and it is oil soluble. But when it comes to acne, you can have acne and oily prone skin, which is the norm, but there is a subset of people who have acne and dry skin. And for a lot of people who are struggling with those blemishes and have dry skin, they have a really rough time using acne products because things like salicylic acid, <laughs> this one, are extremely drying because benzoyl peroxide can be extremely drying. And even retinoids, if you're using a prescription strength, you're probably gonna go through retinization, this drying, peeling, flakiness before the skin starts to get supple and bouncy and blemish free. So this one actually comes in and serves a different market. I feel like this is excellent for people who have dry skin and acne and like this oily texture. If you watched our squalane video and tried any of those best and worst ones and really fell in love with the product, you're probably going to love this. And if you have acne, and dry skin and you've always struggled to find something that doesn't strip things for you, this might be an unsung hero. This is 2% salicylic acid, so I would recommend it for evening use. You could potentially use it during the day, um, but I wouldn't recommend it. And remember, because it is 2%, it is the highest percentage you can get. So make sure that you're kind of building this up over time and not just going balls to the walls, throwing this into your pores all at once. I feel like this is a really unique formula, especially because there aren't a lot of oil salicylic acids out there, even though BHA is oil soluble. And this is really a nice absorbing and then also skin protective sort of serum. Whereas this, you almost need to use this with some form of a moisturizer. This is extremely drying, even if you have oily prone skin. And again, that's why I like to spot treat it, even though you can use it all over. Some people have burned themselves with this. You could technically burn yourself with this too. Heck, you could technically burn yourself with their cleanser if you, you know, scrubbed your epidermis off with like a skin brush from like Clairsonic and microneedled at home. Like you can do a lot of damage with any product, but it is more likely to happen with acne especially potent ones. Now, I haven't seen a lot of people complaining about the relaunch versus the old original one. If anything, people are just praising it and they're so happy that The Ordinary is back because they have missed this so much. And I will say, it still has that formula where it has kind of this melty texture once you start to rub it in, even though it goes on clear. But this is something that, unless you are out treaching through the Amazon rainforest where it is humid and, you know, sweaty and moist, and you've got oily skin to start with, I mean, anyone who's not in that situation situation is going to need a moisturizer with this because this can dry out the skin. But for those oily T-zones, for those spot treatments, or if you want to put it all over under a moisturizer, this is a really 
excellent choice. And I feel like with both of these launches, The Ordinary has made products for two different types of people who struggle with the same thing, acne. And fun fact, salicylic acid is also used in like wart treatments. If you ever get like an over-the-counter wart treatment, you might see salicylic acid at 40%. Salicylic acid can also help with scalp buildup or hairline acne. As an oily person myself who gets even more oily during the summer and sometimes drier in the winter, my scalp gets super oily, as you can probably see. Like after a day of having my hair done, like, it gets greasy in here. And using a salicylic acid treatment on the scalp can actually be a great idea. Dr. Kate Rodan of Rodan and Fields, a dermatologist amazing in Oakland. I love and adore her as a person. She was actually the one who was like, yeah, you can use salicylic acid on your scalp. She told me that probably 2012. Every now and again, I get little hairline pimples, especially right down here by the nape of my neck. And just a little dot dot of this goes really far. Now I haven't used the oily one because again, I am an oily person, but this is something that I have been sort of experimenting with. And for people who have dry skin and acne. I've recommended it to a few people to try and they have loved it. I actually did a meet and greet at The Ordinary's pop-up shop at The Grove in LA and one of our beautiful butterflies took one of these home and I actually have to reconnect with her and ask her how this has been working for her because she specifically mentioned, you know, a couple of other medical conditions that were contributing to her acne, but that she sometimes felt a little bit more dry and that she needed something like this. So this really is filling a new space and it is not replacing this one, but it's coming in to support the team. Overall, do you need both of them? I don't think so. If you're super oily and you have like a lot of things you like to spot treat, go with this one. If you are super dry, you love an oil feeling and you already love squalling, go for this one. I feel like both in the routine would kind of be redundant. Again, I would recommend both at night, although you could probably use them during the day if you absolutely had to, just make sure you wear a sunscreen. And as always, to prevent chemical burns, make sure that you are patch testing your products and that you are titrating or kind of slowly, gradually speeding them up instead of just going pedal to the metal in an electrical vehicle and, um, you know, swerving off the road. <laughs> Which of these do you think is best for your skin? And have you been collecting the memes at the end of the videos? Let me know if you would like a dry skin acne routine. We recently reacted to someone who has dry skin and acne and I feel like there aren't a lot of products for dry skin and acne, so more than happy to make that happen. And overall, remember to stay hydrated, both orally and topically. Reapply that SPF, especially if you're using either of these motherfuckers. And always be beautiful, both inside and out. I love you and the ordinary, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. Love you guys. Bye.